everybody. My name is David Parks. I'm with the Maryland Department of Agriculture. I don't have any point credits where you can get a jacket or nothing like that. No carbon credits, you know, no litigation help. So it's just regulations just and pesticide. just pesticide regulations, what we need to follow. I'll go through these as quick as I can. I know you all are looking forward to lunch. Our staff has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years, continues to evolve and change and not so much for the better. A lot of times just for simple fact, we're losing a lot of people. Um, but hopefully we're trying to replace them as quick as we can. Um, Mr. Rob Hofstetter, he lives right here on the Eastern Shore. He's our director. Um, he's now been in that office for a few years. Um, Rob went through a bad bout with uh, his health there for a little bit. He's back in full swing and he is our di director. Um, this slide, Ms. Shweta Sharma, she has since left us since we had this slide. So we have no, currently have no certification and training coordinator. So we've been getting a lot of calls as inspectors because um, coupled with that, our office administration ha is down, as you can see, um, two vacant spots. So we've been fielding a lot of calls as inspectors regarding the certification training, your certification credits, renewals, things of that nature. And we're still going through those growing pains of that lovely website that we have. So any way I can help you will be certainly, I'll do all I can. Also, Miss Kelly Love, um, who's also my supervisor she's great at um, certification and training information she can help you as well so if you call into the office the numbers will be there on the end and if you need my number i'll be glad to give it to you as well um, inspecting supervisors bray you guys may never meet bray he's on the western shore the inspectors um, kelly is an inspector myself here on the shore we'll go into the map here's the layout now um, here are, the, here are our inspectors, and it has quite, changed quite a bit for us here on the shore this year. As a lot of you know, I had the whole shore and was spread pretty, pretty thin throughout the last few years, even since Petey was here, but he did the so as well. But now they, we do have a new inspector down on the southern part of the shore. Um, so his name is Sean Stacy. You guys may encounter him. He's in Dorchester County. If need be, he might bounce up here if, if I'm busy or something of that nature, if I'm up north. But... For the most part, I've got Talbot and uh, Caroline North up to Cecil County, and it's split in half at the canal with a new inspector that's on the western shore, and his name is Stephen Golf. So, um, you know, hopefully if you need more help and we can help you anyway, we'll certainly be able to because now I'm not spread so thin. Um, pesticide regulation section. Um, the, as far as your renewals, uh, like I say, I know our uh, .gov um, website, egov websites are somewhat um, cumbersome to work through. Um, we'll go through the cards and th stuff here in a minute. A big number here is um, the main office telephone number that takes you directly to the pesticide regulations is that one right there, the 8415710. If you call that number, that takes you right to our department. And again, Hannah's there. Um, we do have a, a new young lady that's working as a temp. It's still vacant, but she's as a temp. Um, her name's Alex. She's really helpful and catching up to speed. And we have temps coming in and out, trying to help us the best we can, but they really can't help you much because they're not up to speed with regulations. They're just simply filing things away for us mainly. Exams, um, if anybody needs to update their or take, retake their um, pesticide private applicator exam or you knew, know somebody that needs to, um, we have always done that in person. Both um, There's one week every other month where we do one in Denton and one in Annapolis, of course one in Boonesboro, but that's way out in Western Maryland. And then we also work through Jenny and the other extension officers to do them periodically um, throughout the counties as well. Um, I just did one for Jenny last week. So with the private applicators, I'm speaking mainly, mainly on the private side because that's what most of you guys are. Um, we do do those throughout the year, um, again, bi-monthly and then periodically. But we're talking about um, having an online option. Um, some of the things you, if you get little comment cards or if you speak to some Rob or someone, if you want to talk to me about it, they're talking about doing an online option. Um, some of the other states have done that. Um, so if, you, if that's something that you'd like to have as an option, just let us know. Most of you guys here have your license. Just, just something for people coming up and, you know, employees that you might have that want to work with, you want to get their license, things of that nature. These are our regulations, 150501 Comar is our regulations. This basically 
lays out the law for us and um, in regards to what we need to follow when we're uh, handling or applying pesticides. I have these copies in my van. Unfortunately, I don't have my van this morning, but um, I can certainly get you a copy if you need one. It just lays out everything. If you're a business, if you're tied to a business, want to know what you need as far as a routine business inspection, things of that nature, even pesticides, or if you have a commercial license and you're doing um, applications for other people, what's required as far as your licensing on your vehicle, such that nature. Pesticide applicator numbers have really changed in the last few years. <clears throat> so we have 1,475 licensed pest control businesses. That's both home pest and commercial ag, things of that nature, a uh, plethora of different licenses. But we do have almost 1,500 um, businesses. Almost 500 did not renew. You'll see some of these. I'm going to breeze through these pretty quick. Um, a lot of that had to do with just um, growth as far as some people just kept their business license um, throughout the years just to have it and then when COVID hit the complications with renewal they just simply let them go. That has a lot to do with the um, not renewed that you'll see the quite a few numbers of but yet there's still a lot of them. Um, 275 public agencies that's your state roads, county roads, things of that nature. We worked hand in hand with them. I was down to Talbot County yesterday at a meeting, noxious weed meeting down there, and we were going over some things regarding some of the noxious weeds, your Palmer and Johnson grass, things of that nature, and trying to brainstorm on ideas to help, you know, both the farmers out and um, other landowners to um, control these these weeds that can, you know, spread really fast. And if one person isn't controlling them, you know, you're you're trying in vain to control them on your side. So. We're working with them. I've worked with um, Jenny and I had a meeting as well um, regarding the same thing. So there, you know, more is becoming up. We're trying to communicate with with those entities and um, help come up with a better plan to control the noxious weeds that are out there. Um, 2,675 or 79 certified a private applicators. Um, when you're a private applicator, you are a certified applicator. Um, so if you see certified applicators when you're a private applicator, that applies. Um, that'll come more into play with restricted use pesticides. So when you're a private applicator, you are certified for restricted uses. The big number in this, <coughs> in this thing for a lot of businesses, um, your nutrients and you know, your grow marks, things of that nature, they can relate. 6,861 registered technicians. Now a lot of them are on the home pest side, but more and more, not now, but more and more um, pesticides are becoming restricted use um, and EPA is going through um, litigation where you know um, uh, registered employees will not be able to apply, apply restricted use pesticides okay so it's going to come more into play with with companies that have had relied on one applicator to oversee a number of registered employees over the year those days will, will eventually disappear um, 3,785 app certified applicators on the commercial side. And we have 183 restricted use pesticide dealers. Of course, it's current. It's, it's important to keep your license and certification and current. Um, it's been a struggle the last few years. I just have people catching up from the COVID crutch. That's what I like to call it. Um, you know, COVID came and I didn't renew and, and uh, they had been going to the certification training um, you know, um, programs that you have like such as here, but they weren't renewing their license. And um, so just make sure that just because you're here, you sign that paper, that's not renewing your license. That just puts in our system that you're caught up on your credits. Okay, and a lot of the guys I had, uh, we had a meeting a couple meets ago, meeting, uh, months ago down to Preston, and I probably had a dozen people that their license had expired but they kept up on their continuing education credits and now all they had to do was just send in their money and renew. They just hadn't done it. Pesticide applicators, again, we kind of run through that, the public agencies, commercials, and of course private, registered technicians, just all verbiage. And it's all in that book, if like I say, if y'all ever need any. The CEU credits, you know, that are required um, eight for certain categories, such as today would be um, commercial ag would be, um, you know, eight credits, and that's yearly. And then for you guys, for private applicators, it's um, 
four credits every three years of which your credits have to take place in the last two years of that three year period. Most guys come just every year to come <clears throat> to learn a little bit and try to get some credits. Renewal, this is, um, we'll go through the website and what it looks like. Um, the eGov is the renewal website, the postcard that you're going to get. How many of you have seen this postcard? Yeah, a few, not too many. So um, that postcard, we've had people say, I never, uh, a plethora of people say, well, I never got my card. I, I didn't get my new card. And, uh, you know, you don't. A lot of people don't um, because they simply don't see it. It's another piece of trash. It slips in an Acme flyer and they throw it away, you know. But they do go out. If you've got a license, this went out along with an email. And another compounding problem with the emails are a lot of times that goes in your spam folder. So um, just keep an eye out for this one. But the nice part about it is once you get this or if you call and ask us, your license number and that renewal code does not change. So if you get that, take a picture of it with your phone, you know, or stick it up on your refrigerator if you're old school, whatever you'd like to do, like me, hey. little magnet. Yes, ma'am. I suggest that people take a picture of that mm -hmm. or on your card you have, write those numbers on the back of your card so that when you go to renew, you've got these numbers. Got your card, too. The problem is half of them lose their card. I know. <laughs> or they washed it. <laughs> Jumped in the river, <laughs> fell in the water, something. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And if you're from Talbot County or uh, Caroline County, I just went over with um, no, not Jimmy. Um, Jimmy's helper, An um, Anna. Yeah, with Anna. She had. She said, I always have people calling and asking, how do I? Know, what are credits I need? How do I renew? Uh, you know, whatever. And I went through her just about a month ago. I said, well, you can get in there. She had no idea. So I showed her, guided her how to get through there. So if you're in Caroline County and you have a question, Anna can help you as well. Yeah. So if you guys cannot get that credit, or if you you know you're, if you have a question whether you're getting getting ready to renew or you know you're coming up on renewal, just give us a call and we'll help you out. We don't want you to get behind because it's it it's a it's more work for us and you as well. And this is kind of what the website looks like down bottom there. Um, it's like I say, I, I'll be the first to admit it is a cumbersome website. Once you get in there and learn it, it, it's not that bad. But you know, I encourage you to go on there and learn it. If you if you, you can't you, you cannot do anything wrong, you can always just back out. Worst case scenario, or just X out and start over. And you can find that real easy. Just go on. Just Google Maryland Department of Agriculture, get on the Maryland Department of Agriculture main page, and on the left hand side there's quick links, there's drop boxes, and one of them says pesticide regulations. Click on that one. When you're on pesticide regulations, underneath that is licensing and certification. There's links to everything right there. Okay? You can find out your credits, what's due, when you're when you need to renew, everything you need to know about your license is on there. You can print your license out as well. Those are lovely sheets that you already signed. For those that signed and left, they don't know this. <laughs> I know you're out there. <laughs> Again, please, um, one thing, the ladies in the office, the, you saw how many certified private applicators we had in the state, and we have two and a half people working in our office. There's all of you and only a few of us. One thing that helps those ladies out tremendously is write down your license number. Bring that with you, write it down. If not, for every name that's on there, they have to go in and search. And without that license number or the last four digits of your social security number, they have to go through names. So if you're a Smith, yeah, you know, good luck. Now, I did cook yesterday because I didn't know their license number and I couldn't talk to them. And, uh, I was working through someone else, and not, you would be surprised how many cooks were in there. <clears throat> registered employee cards. If you do work for a Nutrient Ag, you're registered one of the commercial agencies. Sorry, I shouldn't say specific names. But if you work for one of the commercial agencies and you're a registered employee, this is what your card looks like. So we do reciprocate with other states. Um, the problem is I've had this situation before. Um, where we have <clears throat> a man that lives in Maryland with a Delaware license and he wants to reciprocate to Maryland, you're not allowed to do that. If you, if you want a Maryland license, 
um, you have to live in Maryland unless you live in the state that you're licensed in. Now, if he were, you know, five miles on the Delaware side and he had his Delaware license, he had ground in Maryland, he wanted to spray, then he's fine. We will reciprocate. But if your home address is in Maryland and yet you have any other state, we will not reciprocate back. If you live in a state, it wants you to have your license in Maryland. Chlorpyrifus, there's all kinds of, um, you know, new regulations coming up. Um, of course, it's, it's done and over with on, on that one. Um, all, all uses are prohibited in Maryland after December 31st, and EPA followed through even further with it. So um, we have the neonic, neonicotinoid pollinator protection. Um, it's just regarding systemic neonicotinoids and um, purchasing them and applying them. It goes more towards homeowners and trying to protect the pollinators, of course, which are a key, you know, um, insect to us all. And, um, but it's difficult for us to regulate that. It basically stated that a homeowner couldn't, couldn't he could, they could buy that, they couldn't apply it. Um, they needed a certified applicator to apply it. Well, pretty tough to, for us to regulate that. So what we're doing, what we did as, a, as an agency, we regulated it on a restricted use dealer side. So um, if they didn't want to be a restricted use dealer that, and they wanted to sell those systemic neonicotinoid products in the state of Maryland, they had to be a restricted use dealer. If they didn't, a lot of the big um, corporate entities just took those products off their shelf is what they did. So. Um, that's how kind of we regulated that on the front side versus trying to regulate every homeowner in the state of Maryland. Um, some of the decisions um, the EPA has released um, and proposed, um, of course, restricted use pesticides are, are a hot topic and um, rodenticides um, will be classed as restricted use pesticides. So if you don't have your license, you cannot use or apply um, restricted use or a lot of rodenticides now um, unless, you're, unless you're a certified applicator because they are restricted use. PPE requirements, things of that nature. So just read into those regulations. If you have anything to do with the rodenticide, there's a lot to it. Just check into it, but just to let you know that rodenticides are becoming restricted use pesticides. As I say, more and more pesticides will be restricted use all the time. I'm sure I've been saying this for a few years now. More litigation and rega regulations regarding um, those. But like I say, just read up on them. I'm not gonna sit here and read the uh, slides verbatim. Um, proposed atrazine labeled amendments. Um, prohibited application to saturated soil. Um, some of these label requirements, a lot like dicamba with the forecast of rain. Um, here on the shore, you know, you could probably never apply some of these things with the forecast of rain because um, it changes the day that you're spraying. Um, you'll go from zero to 30 percent in a flash, so um, forecasted rain. But the, of course, label is always a law um, and some of the changes that have updated fairly. Um, the big one was, um, uh, Oh no, it's not on here. Oh, there it is. No more than two pounds per acre per year to sorghum f field or sweet corn, you know, so I don't know anybody that was using more than that, but that is a regulation now. There's a website here. Um, there's a link on our homepage as well. As far as all the regulations involving atrazine, I suggest if you use it to get on there and check it out and look into it. Um, organophosphates, cancellations, 15 active, active ingredients are on the chopping block. Acephate, diazinon, malathion. So there's a few of them out there. Some of them we're familiar with on the ag side, but there are a number of, um, that are on the chopping block. Paraquat training must be updated every three years. Don't forget about that. And your dicamba training if you're implying any of those, those products. Food seed. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, is dicamba every three years or is it an annual? Uh, dicamba is annual. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And paraquats every three years. Yeah. Man, I said paraquat. I didn't say gramoxone. <laughs> I hate labeling it. I always want to say that. But yeah, paraquat. 
Um, our new CNT plan is currently under review by the PT, uh, by the EPA, <laughs> the PTA. Um, this will go to public, public comment period. Commercial use of pe restricted use pesticides will no longer be allowed to be applied by employees working under supervision of a licensed applicator. This could be live in the next 12 to 15 months. Again, reverting back to what I spoke of earlier. And this is a federal rule change and was not the EPA um, requested change, but as Maryland, we're required to at least to keep up with a EPA regulations. Um, like with the Pollinator Protection Act, Maryland went kind of above and beyond the EPA, but at minimum, we have to keep the EPA standards. There's the active ingredients with the Pollinator Protection Act. Again, you know, it's on the homeowner side, but Systemic neonicotinoids are what we need to steer away from as far as with the bees and roses and things of that nature. Again, restricted use pesticides are becoming more and more. These are a few that were added a couple years ago. Legislation, there's more and more every day. It changes all the time. We give up on trying to keep up with it. When's the deadline? I don't even know. Do you know, Jenny, for proposed? I think it's April something, isn't it? And it, for a while, it was we, we didn't have anything because it was really, really quiet, which was kind of odd. Um, so we're thinking that maybe at the end, whenever that comes, they were going to bombard with a bunch of them. But I hadn't heard anything up lately, so Jenny's usually pretty up to date on that as well. Field Watch is a great tool to use. You as a certified applicator, private applicator in the state of Maryland, you have... Um, access to field watch and you can use that. It's a great tool to use to find out what's around your field that you spray. Um, I, I always suggest to get on and when you're on a cold rainy afternoon well, or, or a warm rainy afternoon like what we're getting ready to have outside, you know, if you're doing something at home and looking at something to do instead of watching what a, reruns of some kind of old show you can get on there and play around and uh, look around and see what's around your fields you know know where your vineyards are in your area know where the 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 um, beehives are you know and we encourage on both sides for people to look and register what they need to on on this um, site um, I have a friend that works with that does beehives and whenever he has a meeting he does a number of meetings throughout the state and whenever he has a meeting, he mentions it in there as well to suggest them to make sure that they're registering their hives on, on Bee Watch. And so us as farmers know that, you know, those um, few beehives that someone just put up are on the other side of that Leland Cypress this year, right next to your field. <clears throat> These are the states that participate. You can see the map here. It's not just for agricultural operators, like say, you know, vineyards and, and bees are, are bee big key factor. Complaints are up. More and more people have moved into the, this area, as we all know, over, especially over the last couple years with people working from home more and more all the time, which opens up a double-edged sword. There's more people here and they're working from home more. And all of them have one of these lovely picture, cam picture phone cameras that we all have, and they're readily to use them. You know, we had... Um, we had a number of complaints come in. We do every year, uh, more so this year, and more of them lean towards the side of, of um, lack of knowledge. Um, Jenny and I had that meeting a couple weeks ago, and we mentioned something, um, we mentioned in one of the proposals that came up was to get with like Maryland Public Television and try to do some kind of presentation. I don't know how far that's gonna, gonna go, but it's an idea, you know, and educate people that, uh, number one, um, about, you know, equipment on the road, you know, and maybe do a demonstration when you're going 60 mile an hour and you catch a tractor that's going 24 miles an hour, it seems like you're going to a crawl, but when you go to pass it and it's got a, you know, a, a, a turbo till behind it that's 20 foot, the tractor itself is another 20 foot and it's 40 foot to get around it, it takes a good while, you know, um, things of that nature and, um, and uh, go through um, um, you know, application and what the smells are, you know, it's all part of it. There's one thing I love is the Maryland Right to Farm Act that everyone has to sign before they move here. It's, it's certainly a blessing in our area. Complaints again are up. Just be mindful, everybody's watching. Always wear your PPE, um, especially if you're along the roadway. Enforcement update, 
Records are a big thing. Um, we go through this every year. We've got sheets of these. Um, I think they even put them on our website now. If not, I can get you a copy if you let me know. And it tells you exactly what you need as far as record keeping in the state. Um, must be commercial and, and uh, I suggest keep them two years, um, a minimum of two years just for your own records and for us as well. These are hypotheticals and I'm not into hypotheticals, so I get enough complaints without hypotheticals. <laughs> um, notification, of course, in, in, the, in the case of any pesticide accident, incident, fire, immediately notify the department. Um, make sure you're safe. Try to contain and spill the best of your ability before calling MDA. Just keep in mind, um, you know, make sure you have stuff around. If you have a business, you have a large spot where you keep all your pesticides, have some kitty litter, things of that nature on the business mm -hmm. side, it's a requirement. When we do our inspections, um, we do check things like that. So just be mindful of, of the environment and your spills. So recycling has been a hot topic here of late for us. Um, so we've been participating in this program for 20 years. Um, I, does anybody in here participate in it? Okay. So we, we yes, and Jenny, um, we've got um, collection sites in Chestertown near here, um, Easton and Salisbury here on the shore the, are the um, landfill sites. And then we have a few um, private sites as well. Um, Growmark out to Centerville has one. Um, we're not sure, we've had such a problem with this in the, this, the past two years that we're not sure if we're gonna participate in that this coming up year, unfortunately. Much to our dislike, um, we've always, it, it's always been a big part of our program. Um, as you can see here, um, 20 tons of plastic were recycled in 2021. Um, but unfortunately, the company that oversees this whole project through the EPA hires the contractor that we deal with, and he's been so unreliable and, and um, things have happened the last two years that it's just, not, it's just not feasible for us to do it. We're supposed to be, for an example, our trailers that are throughout the state, they're supposed to be empty, cleaned out, swept out before October 30th. This week, I've still been working with the recycling guy collecting them. Yeah, that's what my week was this week, still working with this guy, trying to catch up from something he should have done in October. It's not our fault, unfortunately. We've been put in a position where we just cannot do it. And then what we have considered for 20 years, something that's triple rinsed and punched and cleaned and suitable for only pesticide usable replasticing re products like your drain tiles in your field or application catch pallets, things that are pesticide catch pallets, things of that nature, he's not considering clean enough for, for those standards. And uh, you know, for we went from a you know 99 take rate to about a 50% take rate. Kent, we were at Kent County um, the day before yesterday, Wednesday, and he has he's not done yet, but he literally has half that trailer that he's rejected. So now we're stuck with them. So we've got to get rid of them. So we may not do this program next year. It, it's, it's changing daily. They had a meeting in Arizona a couple weeks ago, Rob and Delaware, the guys from Delaware, the guys from Virginia, our whole region were, was like, this is just ludicrous the way this is being run. So hopefully things will change, we'll see. It'll be updated. If you have any questions, I cannot answer. You'll have to call into Rob. His number's on there, that 841-5710, unfortunately. <laughs> He's the one that I defer to on this situation because I only collect the jugs, okay? So that's in the works and uh, hopefully it comes back. Spotted lanternfly, you see the big build on 50, billboard on 50. Kill them, squat them, report them, whatever you need to do. I, I've, I've not seen one up in Kink, or Cecil County. Has anybody seen any down here? Oh yeah. Did you report it? Oh yeah. Good lady, I knew you would, I knew you would. Oh yeah, stomped and reported. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you have any questions, again, you can email, call the number to 5710, 841-5710, or you can call me anytime. And I'm always out and about. Feel free to ask me anything. Thank you all, and thanks for Jenny for putting this together. I appreciate it. Thank you. You all do a great job. <laughs> You're an awesome lady. With the bees. With the bees. Is if it's not one of those active ingredients, I'm not sure without looking at the label, honestly. I don't know that much about those particular products, but I don't think they're systemic. 
So in other words, they, they don't, they're not a systemic neonicotinoid, I don't believe, but you can, it'll, I know, but it's not going through the plant. It's the dust, correct? Right. Okay. I know, I know they got it in liquid version too. Again, that sheet is up there. It's on our website, and it's got the it's got the active ingredients that are that are regu you know restricted. And again, that's just it's it's mainly for the homeowner's use and and with flowers and things of that nature, yeah, but I do understand that it could definitely kill the bees. Don Jackson from Ag Industrial, Don. Thank you. I want to thank everybody uh, for being here today. It was a pleasure to be invited to help support this. Uh, I'm Don Jackson with Ag Industrial in Dover. Uh, we want to thank you for your business over the year. And uh, you know, if you need to help with reducing those carbon emissions. Uh, we're first in grassland farming, so we can help you with your hay equipment needs and go from there. Thank you all very much. Okay, let's see. Oh, Jeff, Jeff Corman. You know, I, Jeff Corman, uh, Corman's Aerial Spraying. We're out of uh, Roosburg and Chestertown and Marydale. Uh, been here a long time. Nice. It's my, going into my 26 years spraying, but uh, I always look at this uh, meeting as like, all right, well, spray season's here now. So, uh, Janelle Eck is, uh, Janelle McHenry is uh, helping us as, as well. So if you need us, you can call me, call her, call George Ireland. Uh, as far as new things, we have a, another airplane we added this year and another auger truck uh, just trying to help serve better. And uh, appreciate everybody's loyalty and uh, thank you. Costumes. Uh, good morning. I'm Connor Vincent. I'm the newest agent uh, with King Crop Insurance. Um, so a couple updates with uh, crop insurance. They just released the tropical storm option. Um, so pro many of you, I don't know if you've heard about that. Um, if you haven't, you can stop by. Uh, we can go over it with you. Um, that is extended with the hurricane coverage until April 30th, but that doesn't change your uh, MPCI deadline application of March 15th. Uh, so make sure you're reviewing your coverage um, carefully. You know, with the high input costs this year, you guys are carrying a lot of liability. Uh, so crop insurance is really important. Um, you know, King Crop has been in business for 56 years, uh, only specializing in crop insurance. Um, so we are ready to help you with all your crop insurance needs. And Donna's back there, and we'll be here all day. Back there. <laughs> so we'll be here all day if you have any questions. Thank you. Um, for those of you that don't know, don't know me, I'm Nancy Medcalf. I'm the district conservationist with USDA and RCS, and I work in Kent and Queen Anne's County. I know some of you in the room. <laughs> don't make me nervous. Um, I just had a couple of updates for programs that I wanted everybody to be aware of. The Environmental Quality Incentive Program for NRCS is like our cornerstone conservation program, and we pay for lots of different types of of conservation practices that um, um, address different resource um, issues on the farm and things that you might want to be interested in. Seasonal high tunnels is something that's been new in the last several years that um, you could be interested in. Um, uh, erosion control practices, anything related to livestock management, um, pasture management, um, lots of other practices. So. The cutoff for sign up for this year's funding is today. So if you're interested, we have a table set up. Um, Jen Richardson's here with me today. She's in the back. I'm gonna, I was gonna introduce her in a, a second in another role, but um, so come and see us. We have a sign up sheet and talk to us about the program if you're interested. The other program that we have is the Conservation um, Stewardship Program. Um, the sign up for that is um, April 7th, that's a little bit different where you have to look at all of your uh, cropland or all the land that you have control of and, and enroll that into the CSP program. It's a little more cumbersome to get through it, but um, NRCS has historically every year turned money back in that program. And there's a lot of opportunity for, for folks um, if you want to take the time to sit down with a planner and go over what those opportunities are for you. Um, there is definitely um, opportunity for you there. So NRCS is really committed to increasing participation. So last year they created a position um, called a master planner and Jen Richardson, wave your hand back there, Jen. She um, is the mass, she was hired for um, that purpose um, and she's providing assistance to Ken and Queen Anne's, um, particularly to, to 
um, work on the CSP program and work with you folks um, to, to potentially enroll in that program. So that's my second program announcement. And the third is the um, Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA Act, um, provided a lot of money to NRCS to um, provide funding for practices that will sequester carbon and reduce um, greenhouse gas emissions. And so um, NRCS has pulled out a subset of our practices that they can quantify what those reductions are, and they're putting a lot of money towards um, funding, funding that. And a lot of stuff that um, it's all standard. Um, converting to no-till, increasing cover crop use, nutrient management where you might be converting more to, to um, um, organic fertilizer rather than commercial fertilizer, planting trees, um, energy efficiency in your chicken houses. So there's a lot more money that'll be able to pick up and pay for a lot of those type of practices. In the past, we haven't been able to fully fund energy efficiency practices um, so there'll be um, opportunity there. So that sign up was announced um, Thursday last week and it runs till the 24th of March. So if you're interested in any of that, you can see us at the table, um, catch one of us. We're taking a list of anybody and your contact information and we can um, work with you on, on moving forward with that. Um, the last thing that I think Jenny might have been referring to is to participate in any of our programs one of the um, things that's been going on since 1985 is the um, highly erodible land and wetland compliance requirements. And so anybody who participates in our programs and FSA's programs has to be in compliance with that. And so if you're farming land that um, is highly erodible, then you're supposed to be doing that and you're participating in the programs. You're supposed to be doing that with a system that doesn't cause excessive erosion. And so um, the highly erodible land compliance part, I don't think is a, um, a real issue for, for us, particularly around here. But the other part of it is wetland compliance. And so you're not supposed to be converting um, a wetland and cropping that. Um, so after 1985, um, if, if you've got um, a wetland on your property and you've, and you've altered that or you've drained it and you go and you crop it, then there, you, could be in, you could be out of compliance with the um, terms of, of that regulation. So you want to make sure that you're, whenever you want to do any kind of work, clearing, improving your drainage system, cleaning out your ditches, anything that is going to alter the landscape and any drainage practice that you have or, or do any kind of grading that could potentially impact a wetland. Um, there is a form that you fill out with Kim on the um, F FSA side that you answer, you, you put on there that that's what you intend to do. And what that does is trigger a soil scientist on our side to go out and um, do a wetland determination and they'll determine whether or not that land is already considered prior converted. And if it is, that's the best thing that you want because then that goes in your file and that says that you can do what you want to do and it, it covers you. Um, if, if, and then at that same process, we'll go through with you what you would have to do to get permission to do that practice. So, um, but that is something that that we've run into lately and we'd like to make sure that people are aware of. Um, I'm Kim King. I'm the County Executive Director for FSA here in Queen Anne's. And just to follow up with what Nancy said on the 1026 for wetland conservation and HEL, um, if you are found in violation of something like that, it could put you in jeopardy of receiving any USDA funds. So just be aware when you're out there, you know, call in, stop at your local FSA office, have our NRCS evaluate that before you do anything that could jeopardize your wetland um, or your USDA funding. Um, I do want to talk about two new programs that were announced uh, through FSA, uh, the Pandemic Assistance Revenue Program, or PARP. Um, that's comparing your 2020 revenue to either 18 or 19, and if there's a 15% uh, decrease, you could be eligible for a payment. That sign up is currently open now. I have packets at um, the table that I'm at, or you can contact your local USDA office 
um, FSA office and they can kind of walk you through uh, what you need for that program. And then the second program that they announced is um, the Emergency Release Phase 2 or ERP Phase 2. And that's looking at disaster events for 20 and 2021. Um, so if you've suffered a natural disaster, um, you could possibly sign up for that program as well. And I have additional information on that as, as well at the table. Um, lastly, I want to talk about Farmers.gov. Uh, Farmers.gov, if you go online and you sign up for a EAUTH account, you can pull your FSA maps and see your farm data. And um, we actually have a tool on there now where if you want to figure out acreage because you only planted a partial field, you can draw on the maps and print that acreage out too. So it's a really um, cool feature now. So um, if you want information about that, come and see me. Um, you can do the sign up all at home or you can come in the office and we can assist you with that. So um, that's uh, kind of new with the farm records with the maps. So just uh, be aware of that. And that's all I had. So, thank you. Uh, mm.